Hi, I'm Lowell Shepard on board sailing vessel Wakine at Gypsy 4R2. And this is Pacific Solo. I'm preparing for the greatest challenge of my life, to sail solo across the North Pacific from Tokyo to Vancouver in June 2021. My journey will take me to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and to the point farthest from land in any direction, a set of coordinates I call Nemo North. From there, I will turn towards Canada to reunite with my 92-year-old mother. And I want to take you on this voyage with me via this channel. So join me on this Pacific Solo Expedition. Hi, I'm Lowell Shepard. Welcome to Pacific Solo. I want to just give an update. This is not going to be the usual episode, uh, but I want to tell all my subscribers and my friends um, uh, what the current situation is vis-a-vis -vis, uh, my preparations for voyaging solo across the Pacific later this year. I am a rookie sailor. And initially, this was a five-year plan, and it's been shrunk because of corona. And my mother, who I want to see before she forgets who I am. Um, and so uh, last summer, I made a decision to leave in June of this year for Canada rather than uh, in year 22 or 23. Uh, and June is the prescribed month to go. So I identified uh, four tracks of readiness um, that I need to uh, uh, give concentration to. And I wanted to be 80% ready in those four areas by the end of January so that I can make the trip to Okinawa and back and get more uh, sailing experience, particularly uh, offshore experience. And then to be 100% ready in May. Well, I've given in my notice, I have to leave this marina in Tokyo, February 28th. That's my last day. So I am on the water, uh, living and sailing and learning from that point. And this is the critical month. This is the crunch month where I am uh, uh, involved in all kinds of things of getting my boat ready. And the last week has been almost all on electrics. Boat has been uh, in, a, in an uproar. Um, in terms of uh, panels down and wires and tracing wires. A good friend of mine, David Lahist, who's in fact a patron, uh, he who's had a history with this boat, is uh, doing all the electrics with me, helping map and, and index and replace. And um, I've learned something really important. And the really important thing is use marine grade wire rather than household wire. And uh, I've asked David to, to explain why the things we discovered with some of, some of the domestic wire uh, is rather frightening. So I actually feel my boat is a safer place. So this is all household wire. Um, that you pulled. That we pulled out. It hasn't failed yet, but when you're doing an ocean crossing or something like that, anything that can fail will fail. <laughs> And I just don't want to have Lowell crossing the ocean with something that I know is not wire that's built for the boat. Um, so I have replaced it with this marine grade wire. Right now it's all about electrics and I've learned why you need marine wire rather than domestic wire. And to uh, teach you what I've been taught, here's David. All right, so, um, First things first, I had a problem when, when we were trying to fix the bilge pump. I was trying to figure out, well, is the bilge pump broken? What's going on? And I, I was looking at it and I got 12 volts to the bilge pump. And I'm like, why is this thing not working? Why is it not cranking over? Whatever, whatever. And it had this household wire in it, right? This is the wire that was powering the bilge pump. And, you know, I thought household wire, this is nice. This is, I mean, this is strong. This is, uh, no, I was wrong. Okay, because when it goes under the deck, under the deck, now you start to see, you know, this is nice and flexible, right? But then when it starts to get under the deck, you can see all this discoloration and you can see that it's not nearly as flexible as it was. I mean, this is, this is so hard it can stand up. Look at that, you know? So this is, this is why I was getting a 12 volt 
signal. I was seeing 12 volts, but it didn't near, have nearly enough, uh, whatever, thickness. It wasn't, the, the gauge was off probably because, you know, some of these strands are ruined down here. This is multi-strand, right? And now it gets flexible again when it was down here. So without taking the whole thing out, there's no way for me to know, you know, that there's this really hard discolored wire. Also hard and discolored to me says, this was really high temperature for some time. And I don't want anything high temperature underneath my deck, you know, uh, uh, anywhere, you know, it, it, that's a danger. So I think that Wahine was really, really lucky that there was no fire or anything else. But anyway, this is why we don't use household wire in your boats. This is why you need to take that, spend the extra little cash for actual marine wire. Now, and this is marine wire right there. There you go, that's the marine wire. Again, gauge. Yeah, so marine wire is uh, quite different because it's tinned on the ends it's not just simply copper uh, it's it's got a protective sheath that's quite different than the protective sheath that is around here yeah. okay so here's a piece of marine wire you can see look at look at how loose the sheath is around it right and then this is copper you can see the nice copper color but when you strip it look at how every single strand is tinned every single strand is prevented from corrosion you know so that tinning on the outside now here's a piece of household wire Let's, let's just tr strip off a little bit of this household wire that was in, in Wahine before. Does that look like good copper to you? Hell no. That is not good copper. It's not shiny whatsoever. So that, this is just ruined, right? Um, let's try stripping the other side. Maybe the other side. You know, none of this water, none of this wire was ever in salt water. This is just salty air. Oh, right, here we go. The other side looks all right. This is what it should look like, right? So yeah, the tinning works. The tinning matters. And uh, also, of course, you want multi-strand because single strand, that kind of stuff that you have in your house, it's just like one big thick strand, has no flexibility. And a boat's rocking around, you're gonna have, you're gonna, uh, you know, have the wire moving around a little bit. You don't wanna have that cause a little break because when a single strand breaks it all breaks you know it's multi-strand just has that flexibility you need for your boat that is all <laughs> get Cut. marine wire marine wire all right i gotta keep working on bng yeah navionics and stuff like that If you've enjoyed this video and would like to support me and the Pacific Solo Expedition, please subscribe to the channel and like and share and comment on the episodes. You can head over to my Facebook page or the Pacific Solo website for regular updates. And you can find a wide selection of original Pacific Solo and Nemo North products on my store. Everything from enamel mugs and neck gaiters to t-shirts and hoodies. Pick up some merchandise for yourself or a gift for that somebody special. Every purchase goes to support Pacific Solo and to create educational materials for the Great Pacific Learning Project and my partnership with schools, which will help raise awareness and bring information to students about the importance of protecting our oceans. Take care, everybody.